Hello and welcome to Let's Make, a series where we recreate video game mechanics using Unreal Engine 4. In part one of the Spider-Man series, we got our character set up and figured out how to execute Spidey's web zip move. So do go and check that out if you haven't seen it already. Today is all about web swinging. I'm going to structure this episode a bit differently and take things a bit more slowly so you guys can follow along in your own projects if you want to. So let's begin. First off, some observations. Spider-Man can only start swinging when he's falling downwards. This one might seem obvious, but Insomniac's new Spider-Man game uses real pendulum physics to drive Spider-Man's swing, and to avoid throwing Spider-Man into the last part of the pendulum arc, or having sharp changes in velocity, he can only start a swing when he's not travelling upward. Spider-Man can only perform a web swing when there is something above him to attach the webs to. In previous Spider-Man games, our protagonist could attach his webs to clouds and swing through the sky, but in this instalment, traversal is more grounded and realistic. Attaching webs to buildings makes the whole system feel awesome, but also brings about a host of new challenges, which we'll discuss later. The designers at Insomniac Games give the player a massive amount of control whilst mid-swing. Not only does the direction of Spider-Man's velocity always steer itself towards the direction the camera is facing, but a quick push on the left analog stick can easily alter Spidey's swing in any direction you want him to go. This is a great example of how the game designers make the player feel skilled. It's super unrealistic, and some players may find it too easy, but designing a system like this gives the player full control and helps him to feel powerful. When exiting a swing, Spider-Man's animation is driven by the angle at which he comes out of the pendulum arc and whether or not the player has pressed the jump button. Here, the animations are used to describe Spidey's movement through the air, making his path feel smooth and natural. So let's see if we can put this system together. First, inside our character blueprint, when the right trigger is pressed, we perform some checks to see if Spider-Man can swing. Then, in order to move our character in an arc around the web attach point, we need to apply a force to the character on every tick of the game. To calculate this force, we need to take a look at the pendulum equation. At first glance, this formula looks pretty intimidating, but to get it working for us in the engine, all we need to do is to use the dot product of the player's location minus the point we're swinging from, then multiply this by the normalized direction vector between these points, and then multiply that result by minus two. Straight out of the box, this seemed to work pretty well, but I found that sometimes the character was flying around all over the place. So to rectify this, I added a hard clamp on the velocity and the option to scale this force down so we can apply some other forces to give the player more control. Next, to see this working in the engine, we need to calculate a point to swing from. Before trying to figure out how to find the right building to swing from, I wanted to get the swings feeling smooth and natural. So let's tackle that part first. To get a smooth swing, I first needed to understand something about the nature of pendulum physics, which I'll attempt to illustrate with this crude diagram. If Spider-Man is far away from the attach point when he begins swinging, he has to enter the pendulum arc somewhere around here and swing down into it. But if he is closer to it, he has to start somewhere in the middle of it and will quickly start swinging upward. Therefore, the distance between Spider-Man and the attach point defines the part at which he will enter the pendulum swing. This means that for the smoothest swing, the speed at which the character is traveling downwards should be what defines the distance from the character that the next attach point should be. Thankfully for us, the pendulum force equation we're using isn't all that rigid when applied in the engine, so even if the swing point isn't at the perfect distance, Spider-Man's momentum and the engine's gravity algorithm will stretch the arc in a similar way to how Spider-Man's webs stretch in the original game. Using this knowledge, it's really easy to figure out an optimal swing point for Spider-Man, which we calculate at the start of each swing and then feed into our new pendulum function. Next, to rotate Spider-Man's body towards the attach point in the local X-plane only, 
we use this modified cross product formula which drives a rotation lerp towards our attach point. From here, the move became about how much real physics I could take away from the pendulum swing to give the player control without making the move look unrealistic. First, I added some extra force to defy gravity when swinging upwards by adding to the force created by the pendulum formula. Next, I added a constant force in the camera direction which just adds a lateral force at all times during the swing to help steer the arc. Then, when swinging, I enable the movement input of the controller to add force local to the camera in the direction that the player presses. And lastly, to avoid really extreme speeds, I set the player's terminal velocity as a hard value on tick. But of course, this move isn't nearly so simple. Now we can calculate the perfect point for Spidey to swing from, what we need to do is to find the closest real-world location he can physically attach a web to. To do this, I used a for loop with break. Each time the loop fires, we perform a sphere trace by channel, starting at the optimal web attach point. Each subsequent loop then increases the radius of the trace until we find a potential attach point. If a hit is found, we then do some checks. If the trace result passes all of our checks, we then perform another trace function up or down from the hit location. This is to try and compensate for the difference in swing arcs, the trace result and the optimal attach point would create. I'm not going to dive into that part today because to be honest it's a bit over complicated and more importantly this is not how they achieved this in the original game. So for now, if the trace function found a valid point to swing from, we can start Spider-Man swinging. To get the best web swing, I decided to use the optimal attach point to drive the swing arc function, but then use the trace result to orient the character and to attach the web particle system to. This approach is a bit hacky and does have a few bugs, but for now it works pretty well. After designing this system, I stumbled across an article that I'll link to below, which describes how the designers at Insomniac added extra outward force from the building to help keep the player centered. I did try out this method and managed to get it working okay, but for now it just doesn't feel as nice as the trade-off method we used above. So we'll stick with this for now and hopefully we can add the outwards force method next time and calculate the swing from the building trace itself. Just as Spider-Man begins a swing, we play a web shot transition animation for just a couple of frames to give the illusion of him shooting a web. Next, we calculate the phase or angle of the swing on every tick using this equation. This basically calculates how far along the pendulum arc we are in the direction of our velocity. This value is used to drive a swing animation blend space which orients Spidey towards the web point in the local Y plane. To create a bit of variation, I use several different blend spaces, which are selected depending on the angle of the web attach point relative to the character. Next, if the player presses the jump button during a swing, we stop Spider-Man from swinging and launch him forwards. The launch velocity is scaled by the angle Spider-Man is swinging at when exiting the pendulum, so he travels further if jumping in the middle of a swing, and travels higher if jumping at the end of it. To craft the swing jump animations, I used the same method as in the previous Spider-Man video. First, I handcrafted some key poses from the animation I was copying, then blended them together and recorded them using the engine. This time, I did need to spend a bit more time in Blender to clean up the animations and to mirror them, which was super easy to do in Blender by simply using this magical button here. Lastly, to finish up, I had to further develop the in-air state. I used two blend spaces here, one with a skydive pose which blends into a dive and one which blends from the air apex pose into a dive, using the character's Z velocity. To polish up the move, I added the same particle effects as the web zip move, a particle trail on his hands when diving and some post-process speed lines to really sell the fast jumps and dives he performs when swinging. Then lastly, because there are so many different forces being applied to the character, I had to spend a long time playing around with the variables to get web swinging feeling right.
I had to keep coming back and revisiting this every time I made a change, so I will definitely look to refine this system in the future. So let's see the final result. This video took a lot longer than I'd hoped, and as a result there's a ton of extra work to do to get this feeling like the original game. So in the next video we will really start to polish up what we've made so far, add in wall running and a few other tricks, then create a mini game to showcase our progress so far. So be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.